We're going to turn this old Volvo estate into the best coffee experience possible. And the best thing about it, it's going to be completely off grid. Won't need to have mains power or anything like that. Hey folks, my name is Nigel and this is Off Grid Van Life where we look at everything related to van conversions, but more specifically off grid power. Basically, we want to help you to get the best off grid solution possible for whatever it is that you need it for. And now, so a bit of history into this project. A friend of mine owns this car and he is one of the best coffee people that I know, literally knows coffee inside out, roasts his own coffee, has his own coffee brand, has worked in the coffee specialty coffee industry for years and years. I first met him in a coffee shop that I used to go to all the time. And so I've known him for a number of years and uh, he's a great guy, but his style, his brand and everything is so good. And he reached out to me and said, oh, he needs this power system to run his coffee setup and he wants to build one of the best coffee experiences and he wants it to be completely off grid out of the back of this old Volvo and so as soon as he mentioned all of that I was like yep I'm in that sounds like a great project to be a part of and so here we are been working with them to build out and design what this actually looks like and the idea is it's going to be completely off grid so not going to need to be tied into mains electricity or anything like that we're going to put one of our battery systems into here and obviously with our experience in terms of fabricating and building out vans and all that sort of stuff having a 12 volt water system and all that sort of stuff uh, has helped the project and we've been able to build out a custom bespoke solution for them uh, where we'll have a water tank have a way of filling it uh, with without removing everything out of the back here. Um, and we'll have a way for the waste from the coffee system from the machine and then um, a rinser for your uh, um, milk uh, jugs, all that sort of stuff is all gonna be integrated into here. And of course, one of our ops uh, batteries, we're putting the ops 280 into this and a DC to DC charger, mains charger, just so that if he needs to charge it overnight, that sort of thing. Uh, but the idea is that you can make sort of probably a couple hundred coffees uh, out of the system without any charge. With the DC to DC charger, obviously, when he drives between gigs, weddings, uh, events, whatever the case is, it'll obviously charge the battery up. And so the battery and the power system is going to be phenomenal. It's going to serve this really well. We've been testing it. So part of some of the tests that you've seen on this video are sort of the run up to this system that we've built. So we've been testing it with a coffee machine that takes a similar draw to what he's going to be running here. So he's running a Lamazon a linear mini coffee machine in this system um, and we're pretty confident with the power system we're going to be running a 2000 watt Guyandel inverter uh, yeah so it's looking looking pretty good so we're going to get cracking with building it out as I said it's a custom bespoke build that we're going to be doing here in the workshop and so we'll take you guys through it and uh, walk you through the process step by step and then we're going to get it in here and run some tests and see how we get on so let's go we're going to be building everything from scratch so I've cut all the plywood so I'm going to be using a 12 millimeter ply and uh, gonna be assembling everything from scratch. We'll show you just in a time-lapse, but pretty basic design, basically two big pieces, top and bottom. Then we're gonna have three uh, lengths that are gonna be running vertically. That's gonna hold most of the weight on the top. It's not a huge amount of weight that's gonna be on the top. It's basically gonna be uh, linear, um, Lamazaka Linear Mini Coffee or Espresso Machine, and then a grinder, and then a couple of other things. We're also gonna plumb in this guy, which is a uh, little uh, bottle washer, cup washer. Um, so we're gonna plumb that into the top. And we also have a water container that we're gonna fit in here. We're gonna plumb that in as well. And it's gonna be a fully um, set up, the setup's gonna be uh, fully removable as well. So everything's gonna be wired in and plumbed in in a way that if Ben needs to, he can pull it out, potentially set it down on a table or whatever. Um, but equally, if he needs all the space in the back of his car, he can pull it out, get somebody to help him carry it out and uh, just unclip. So we're gonna connect the DC to DC charger in with a set of Anderson plugs. Um, there's gonna be an EHU charger for mains charging of the battery. That's just gonna be a normal plug that's gonna come out the side of this thing. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get stuck into starting to assemble this. Uh, then we're gonna put the battery into place, cut the hole where the battery needs to go, uh, then start putting everything together, uh, DC to DC charger, inverter, all of that good stuff. So 
we're going to get cracking with it and we'll show you guys as we go. So we started out with putting everything together. So I pre-cut the timber, the plywood, and I used these corner jigs to hold everything together because I was working on my own. And so that allowed me to get everything nice and straight. I drilled the pilot holes and then put the screws in. It's amazing what size screws you can put into plywood if you drill pilot holes first. Um, makes it a very strong joint. Obviously you could have used pocket screws which would have been even stronger, uh, but this was just a bit more of an efficient way of doing it. Turn it upside down to put the center bit on, took a bit of measuring to get that center um, upright in the right place so that we could uh, drill the pilot holes for that. Marked out where it needed to go and then we were good to go. Drilled them out, screwed them just like the sides. And that was us. These uh, corner jigs are very handy for this sort of thing. Okay, so here's the progress so far. Looking pretty good. Basically, this is the bottom. These are obviously the sides. And then we've got a center um, support. And with it being 12 mil, it'll be a little bit heavier than probably needs to be, but it's gonna be substantial. It's not gonna break or anything like that. And the most important thing is in the linear mini sitting on the top here, and then other coffee related stuff here, grinder, etc. Um, this is very unlikely that this top bit will bow. So yeah, it's gonna have good structure. I'm pretty pleased with that. Just screwed it up from the bottom. The top bit, because it's all the weight's gonna be sitting down, and even when you carry it, um, obviously this bottom bit would be holding up against here. The top bit I'm just gonna nail down using a pneumatic nail gun. Next task was to start getting the water system in. So I put the water tank in and the battery as well, just to mark everything out where it needed to go and started putting in the dividers that would hold the water tank in Then put all of the fixtures into the water tank and realized that I didn't have enough uh, and I had the wrong parts for that. So I'll explain more now, but yeah, I spent a bit of time searching on Amazon for what I needed. Okay, so here is where we've got to so far. Got the tank in. Got the water pump in, water pump is plumbed, and then coming through the divider. This is what will connect to the espresso machine, which sits over here. The only thing is I don't have the right uh, fittings for plumbing in the tank properly. So this is the inlet for the tank. This is the outlet. There was already a hole in the lid on the tank, so I've just made it a bit bigger to put a coupling on there that we can then put a... Uh, flanged um, connect on for the hose. The trouble is I really need a right angle just because of the height of what this is. So for the time being until I get those, I'm gonna fit it with the pipes just kinking ever so slightly like that. It'll still, it'll still let water in and this will be fine because um, obviously that's a little bit lower. And then this is just feeding into the bottom of the tank and I'll plumb that in properly so that it works the way it's supposed to when I get the right fittings. So yeah, looking pretty good. I'll probably drill another hole on this side and mount a an overflow and then plumb an overflow through the side here. Um, but for now, to get it ready for this weekend, this is what I'm going with for now for the water. Now I'm gonna start on the electrics. Then needed to cut the hole where the battery would go, so mark that out jigsaw and we were good to go. Okay, so update on where we got to here. So it turns out that it's not gonna actually work. This is just too high. When I put the lid on, it's just kinking it too much. So I need to get the correct uh, parts for that, just a right angle um, uh, fitting for that. It's a half inch male thread going into this fitting here. And then obviously a right angle uh, barbed um, fitting for the pipe to go on. So yeah, I'm gonna get that and then we'll crack on with it later in the week. Took a bit of a break for a friend's wedding and then my folks came over to visit and dad helped me with a bunch of uh, the tasks that were remaining on this. So next thing was to uh, start putting the electrical system in. We had Ben come over to help us just with the positioning of some of the things and we talked through a few bits and pieces just to make sure we were on the right path. And then we started the process of cutting out the um, holes for the uh, electrical outlets and then wiring everything and starting to connect it all up put a fuse in, all that sort of stuff. So this is where we've got to so far. So tank is completely plumbed in there with right angle uh, hose connectors there. Got the pump plumbed in, ready to connect the espresso machine. 
and all of the electrics wired in. So inverter, DC to DC charger, uh, mains charger, one of our OPS 280 batteries. Also got this little thing here, a um, rinser for the uh, um, milk jug. Uh, that's plumbed in there with a waste tank. And then the three pipes coming off there is the filler, waste and overflow slash breather for the tank. Then mains charger here, um, just gonna figure something out for that. And then have the inverter on off switch and a switch for the water pump. And then cut these holes out for these here. So those are gonna go in there two next to each other. Obviously wired into the inverter and then connect the battery up using these two. On the back here, we have a fuse for the battery and uh, everything wired in there. We'll leave the back open, we'll just put a piece of ply that partially supports this and just add some strength and the same for the water tank there. We'll leave them open so that the inverter can draw air in like that. Um, so yeah, looking pretty good. Then we needed to finish everything up. So I glued the uh, bottle washer in just using Psychoflex, uh, so uh, uh, an, an adhesive sealant, and then I put the electrical outlets in and did more electrical work, got the stuff ready for where it'll plug into the car that gets the feed from the, the engine battery to the DC to DC charger, finished off the rest of the electrics, wired in the switch for the water pump and all the rest of the things. Got everything sorted out here, tidied up, cable tied, all that sort of stuff. Cut the hole for the porta filter cleaner. All right, so this is where we're at. So we've got the sockets plumbed in there, got the on off switch for the water pump, on off switch for the inverter, everything connected to the battery. Uh, used a uh, resistor over here to connect everything to the battery so that we don't blow the capacitors on the inverter. Um, so everything's in there nice and tidy. This back is going to stay open. All I'm going to do is probably put a couple of pieces of uh, ply, just vertical upright, one to hold the water tank in, which can be taken out by undoing a couple of screws, and the other to um, just add some support here, because obviously we have the battery here. You need to be able to take this thing in and out of the car. Um, so just need some additional rigidity and support. So this box is fixed onto here from the bottom and then we'll put a lid on the top and screw it in on the top there so that it can be opened up to access the electrics and sort all of that out. This uh, <coughs> um, milk jug rinser is plumbed in as well. Obviously it activates by turning it on. Once the system's under pressure then hopefully it'll spray water out here and clean stuff. Uh, but either way it's handy just to be able to pour stuff down here etc etc. Um, so that's plumbed in, sealed on there. Got this hole cut for another piece of coffee equipment that's going to sit recessed in here. It'll come just above here. That's just one of those um, uh, uh, filter, filter basket cleaners. Um, so that's going to sit in here and then a little spot here for tamping um, just next to the upright support here. So good, good strength on that. This little <coughs> space here is probably going to be where point of sale, iPad, something like that. We look under here, everything's sorted. So we've got mains charger, DC to DC charger, and the inverter there, uh, everything plumbed in. This is the cable for the mains charger. Gonna put a door on the front here that's hinged that will just be closed with uh, magnetic uh, things just with a hole to open it. And then on this side we have the water pump and the tank and then obviously this is the pipe that the actual um, coffee machine will be plumbed into. So that's all sorted, coming out the side there. And then these pipes uh, will be labeled. So one of them is the filler pipe for the tank. One of them is the overflow slash breather pipe for the tank. And the other one is the uh, waste pipe for that. And also potential to plumb in a waste for the coffee machine. Right now the coffee machine just goes into a drip tray. But that might be plumbed into a proper pipe for going to a tank. So next job now is to screw these down all the way along, cut the two pieces for the end support there, cut the two doors that go on here, and cut the lid for that and put all of that on. All right, so we are filling the tank here. So here's the setup. We've got a bucket just to test here in the workshop before we put the doors on, but we've just got a garden hose from a tap. 
going to that, which is working pretty well. And here we're going into the tank over there. Got everything plumbed in. We're basically just going to be checking for leaks. We're going to turn the water pump on in a second. Everything here is connected, and then we're going to be testing that. Just the concept, we've blocked off this here, which is going to go to the coffee machine, but basically we're going to be testing for leaks, etc. here, yeah, and just making sure that everything works. So, yeah, looking good so far. All right. So, pump is on. As you can see there, the little blue light. Everything's pressurized. We've got water in the tank. Overflow works. Pretty happy with that. No leaks so far. Obviously, we'll keep an eye on it. That's why we're doing this test before we close everything up. But now, we're gonna test this thing to see that it works. Works pretty well. Drains out there. Drains out of that pipe, which will then be into a jerry can of some sort uh, to collect the waste. But yeah, pump then obviously repressurized. So, yeah, it's looking, looking pretty good. Okay, so here we, is where we got to so far. So I've got my positive and negative wires coming out here. The positive I'll show you, but it's basically wired through behind all of the trim and the bodywork and stuff. Um, and all the way to going through the bulkhead, through the normal grommet that's there. The negative is obviously just the ground for the DC to DC charger. I've put it onto the bolt behind this trim on this uh, tie down point here. So one thing to note and one, what I would recommend is before you get too far in your process of putting stuff back together, when you're laying wires like this and you're connecting a ground to somewhere that, where there's already a bolt or something, um, is to test it. So what I've done here is just taken my multimeter and just double checked that the chassis is grounded to the neutral uh, terminal uh, on the engine battery and then I've also got enough of this black wire that I went around to the front and I put I checked for continuity from the negative terminal on the engine battery through to this wire and it's grounded fine so I'm happy with that now I can tidy up and put stuff back together before I terminate the ends of these onto an Anderson wire that would then uh, connect to the coffee setup and here's the engine side. So as you can see, the red wire for the DC to DC charger going through the grommet there, through the bulkhead. And I'm going to put some um, uh, conduit on it and then pass it through here where the rest of the wires are and come and connect it onto the engine battery over here. Got a friend to help me lift it in for a dry fit to see that it fitted and get it working on the DC to DC charger. All right, so first dry fit. We've got these pipes, the idea is that those would all hang out here. The black is for the waste from the washer, white is the breather from the tank, and then this one here is the filler for the tank. Obviously, still need to put a hole through here, and this is where the coffee machine is going to sit. Then there's a filter cleaner that's going to sit down in there with a coffee grinder just behind it there. Obviously, the um, uh, milk jug rinser there, and then a point of sales system over here. So now everything is connected up. Uh, just using this Anderson over here. Um, it's nice and tidy, out of the way. Can take this out if we need to. And uh, now we're gonna test the battery to battery charger and make sure everything's working with that. So we've got the Volvo back in here and uh, when we were doing some tests the other day I found that the coffee machine, the espresso machine, which is the Linear Mini over there by Lamazaka, uh, actually pulls a bit more power than we initially thought. So when we were reading up on it, um, the range that it pulls is between 1600 and 1850 uh, watts, <clears throat> uh, which is quite a big range. But in the testing that we've done, it actually maxes out that range pretty much consistently. So it's pulling like 100 and 
80, 185 amps um, when it's heating up the water. And so initially when you first turn it on, it's obviously pulling a lot more than uh, when it just heats up a bit of water once you've pulled just one shot. So uh, with all of that in mind, the inverter is coping fine. Everything else is fine except for the battery is our normal ops battery that we've built with a 150 amp BMS. And so what we've decided to do is we're gonna pull it out, uh, rebuild the battery with a 200 amp BMS, probably not put it in the case, so it'll just be kind of a custom DIY battery. And then we're gonna redo some of the wiring just to up update it so that it's using a slightly bigger gauge wire. So I'd built it on the basis that it could be comfortable with sort of 175 amps of draw, and that's what it's fused to currently. Um, but obviously it's slightly exceeding that, so we just need to take that into consideration, just upgrade some of it slightly. So I'm gonna pull all of this out, make the upgrades, put it back together, and then we'll retest it this afternoon. So yeah, let's go. I then needed to pull it all out for the upgrades. I didn't feel like carrying it all the way back to the workshop because it was a bit of a mission to get it through the door and stuff because you had to hold it upright, etc., etc. And it is a reasonable weight. It's not too bad uh, to get out um, if you keep it flat, but when you're carrying it vertically and stuff, it's a bit of a mission. Uh, I then needed to dismantle the battery so I could remove the BMS and upgrade it with the 200 amp daily BMS. So I just screwed that onto a piece of ply and then taped that on so the ply will essentially hold it up uh, and then the tape holds it up against the battery. Also, it just gives a bit of um, uh, a, 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 a barrier between the BMS and the battery cells, as you can see, wired it all in, checked the app, tidied all the wiring up with cable ties, and then put it all back. Had to do some mods onto the box to actually get it through the gap because the original hole that I had drilled or, or cut rather was uh, just big enough for the battery case. And with the BMS on the side of the cells, now it was wider. So I had to uh, modify the box a little bit for that, but it wasn't too bad. Got everything tidied up, put some new fuses in, and we were good to go. Okay, so here is the upgrade. Basically, took the battery out of the case that it was in, replaced the main wires coming off the battery there, so that's a 50 mil squared, so much more substantial. Um, put a 200 amp BMS, so we have a bit more capacity on the battery itself. And obviously these, uh, made these holes a bit bigger. Put a 200 amp fuse in there. <coughs> and then, uh, Got everything wired in here. Upgraded the wires on the back of the inverter there as well to 50 mil squared. Uh, so yeah, it's looking pretty good. Uh, BMS comes directly off the battery there. It's on the side there, comes directly off onto that bus bar over there. And uh, one other thing, put a fuse in here onto the switch. Um, so that's just onto the negative line there. So that's the one that goes to for the pump and then obviously the inverter switch there and then also put a fuse in over here so this is the wire that goes to the pump as well put a little fuse in there out of the way just to keep everything safe on that front yeah looking pretty good it's got the uh, uh, Orion Victron DC to DC charger just a generic um, AC charger from AliExpress, the Gyndal 2 kilowatt inverter there. So yeah, pretty pleased, it's looking good. Gonna get it all back up together, put the coffee machine on and check that everything runs. And then get it back in and ready to test. All right, we've got everything plumbed in here. So I've just plumbed in the uh, espresso machine. So that's going into there, so a bit of water leakage uh, just when I did that. But yeah, looking pretty good. Pipe goes up through there and then into the espresso machine. Looking good. And then uh, got this guy in there as well. So that's for cleaning the uh, water filter basket. And so it just needs a little bit of a catch tray underneath here. But that I've just put straight into the inverter. Um, so it should be good like that. But yeah, otherwise everything else is Looking pretty sweet, pretty good setup, pretty happy with it. So we're gonna get this thing winding shortly and uh, put some shots. 
And there it is, folks. We are done. So these upgrades were definitely well worth it. And we uh, took the whole system for a spin, made several coffees, made sure everything uh, monitored the uh, draw on the battery. We were pulling about 185 amps thereabouts, so well within the threshold of uh, the BMS. And we are very pleased with the system. So Ben's going to be giving it a run over the next few weeks. We're going to be testing more and uh, then he should be good to go. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. We're pretty stoked with how it turned out. Um, fully off-grid solution for a coffee car. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, it's a beefy system in a very small space. We're pretty stoked with that. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting and uh, we will see you guys in the next video. Check out that latte art. Still got it. Cheers.